Hello everyone, my name is Udita. The webinar is about enabling domain-specific extensions to CSML. The session presents a semantic approach how to design and enable domain-specific extensions to CSML. A small example defines requirement types with additional properties and special rules for requirements, model completeness and consistency. The session will be hosted by Dari Schillingas, the Head of Solution Department at Nomadic Europe. Dari Schillingas has been working at Nomadic since 1998. He takes the responsibility of helping clients to adopt Magic Draw Cameo Systems Modeler, Modeler as platform for effective model-based systems engineering practices. He has run hundreds of training and consulting sessions at many well-known organizations in 23 countries. Darius is, also, is a doctor of informatics and he is OMG certificated expert in BPM, UML and CSML modeling. Today's presentation will take about 50 minutes and the question answer session about 10. You don't have to wait until the end to ask the questions. Just simply type them in the chat window and Darius will answer them after the presentation. Due to the limited time, other questions will be answered later and published with the link to our video of the recorded webinar. So Darius, are you ready to start? Thanks for the presentation. Yes, I'm ready to start and uh, welcome everybody to the uh, webinar. And, um, and the title is uh, Enabling Domain Specific Extensions to CSML. And uh, I would like to start by, um, by just uh, recapturing uh, a little bit of what is CSML. So CSML, as uh, most of you may know, is uh, a modeling language for complex systems engineering, uh, specification and analysis, validation, verification, and validation activities. Um, and uh, it is developed by Object Management Group and COSI, International Council of uh, Systems Engineering. And it has been adopted by OMG in May of uh, 2006. CSML is uh, considered as a key enabler for model-based uh, systems engineering uh, and uh, as a de facto standard as well. CSML is defined as UML profile. Um, UML has been defined uh, taking into account more software engineering view and uh, some of the concepts have been more software specific. So CSML has been um, uh, defined as an extension to UML adding more system engineering specific concepts and also taking uh, uh, some UML concepts and uh, renaming them, adding some additional properties like, for example, a concept which was uh, called uh, component in uh, UML is typically called uh, a block in, uh, in CSML. Um, and uh, uh, CSML also reuses out of the box some of the UML capabilities and uh, it also uh, ignores some of them. Some of the UML uh, diagrams and concepts are not, not in scope of, uh, of CSML. What is important about uh, CSML, uh, it has been actually Itself, it has been defined as a UML profile, which uh, uses uh, the capabilities of uh, extending the language of uh, UML. Uh, SysML itself is also extendable to support domain-specific needs or specific methodology. So this is the focus of our session today. Um, we, we probably should uh, uh, just take a quick look into what uh, kind of diagrams uh, are offered by SysML. So SysML offers uh, uh, three, three major types of diagrams. Uh, uh, which are structural diagrams, uh, behavioral diagrams, and uh, requirement uh, diagram. Uh, in this picture, you also see um, annotation which uh, shows you which diagrams are similar as in UML and uh, and which diagrams are are new. They were not uh, were not uh, included in UML two, and uh, some of them are are modified. Um, uh, the purpose of this session is not to go through. All of them, although typically you can extend and, and tailor uh, things in, in any of those uh, diagrams and uh, any of uh, CCML concepts which are related uh, or UML concepts which are related to those uh, those diagrams, uh, but we will uh, we will take a, a closer look into um, some of the most uh, most often uh, tailored and most often uh, extended parts of the CCML. In fact. Uh, Based on my consulting experience, I would say that uh, the most uh, the most extended parts are requirements uh, uh, elements, which uh, most uh, organizations uh, treat uh, specifically. And uh, I still have to 
um, uh, to come to meeting uh, two organizations which use exactly the same taxonomy of uh, requirement elements and uh, uh, use them with uh, exactly the same uh, the same properties. Uh, so uh, this will this will be the the focus area for the example which will be we will be using in this session to uh, to understand and uh, uh, explain how uh, how uh, CSML can be tailored using uh, using uh, CSML extension mechanism and also some of the uh, specific tool capabilities of match draw modeling environment. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, we should also take into account that uh, the the Block definition diagram is typically also um, uh, a candidate for extending and tailoring. It is very often that uh, organizations adopt some uh, uh, some uh, some modeling framework which requires them to mark uh, to mark a specific uh, category of blocks. For example, saying that this is a logical block, or maybe this is a software block, or maybe this is a hardware block or integrated uh, subsystem. Um, as, as I mentioned uh, before, today the focus will be on the requirement uh, diagram. So what, uh, uh, what are the major concepts of requirements which are defined in CSML? So CSML defines, uh, uh, defines requirement as a, uh, as a concept which is uh, based on a class concept uh, from UML. And it also adds uh, uh, two additional uh, major properties which are ID identifier and uh, text, which is a textual definition of the requirement itself. It also typically uses a, a name of a class to, to also give a short summary of the requirement. Um, and uh, that's, uh, that's it. And uh, actually, requirement is considered to be the only uh, kind of standardized uh, uh, concept in CSML. Uh, however, CSML also has some non-normative non uh, extensions to, uh, to requirement, which uh, which are shown uh, below in the white, uh, white colored uh, uh, stereotypes. So for example, extended requirement is uh, an extension of a requirement uh, which uh, shows uh, that uh, you also would like to capture the source. Uh, so who gave you this requirement or where it comes from. Uh, then uh, you may also uh, associate some risk, um, uh, risk level to the, uh, the requirement. And you can also specify the verif verification methods, uh, such as, for example, that you verify by demonstration or, or by, by analysis or, or by, by, uh, by testing. Um, and um, I must say that actually uh, in, uh, in uh, organizations I, I worked with, uh, typically uh, different types of properties were used. Some of them, like risk or verify method, was very important, but uh, maybe uh, they also call them differently or use different uh, uh, different uh, types of enumerations, uh, uh, different levels of uh, of uh, risk, for example, or uh, they would be using uh, uh, they would be using uh, many additional uh, properties. So while this extended requirement shows uh, uh, a good example of how requirement uh, can be extended, uh, in reality, in uh, real practice, organizations typically are creating their own uh, versions of extended requirement. And uh, also, it is very typical that you would like to, um, uh, in addition to adding some specific properties, you would like to, to add some semantic uh, uh, labeling to, to treat and analyze requirements differently. So, for example, you can differentiate between business requirement, a functional requirement, usability requirement, performance requirement, and, and then quite different rules would be applicable to the interface requirement. For example, um, the authors of, uh, of uh, books uh, in, um, uh, on, on CSML would, uh, would tell you that uh, the interface requirement uh, should be satisfied by the interface block, whereas uh, a functional requirement should be satisfied maybe by some activity or some other functional um, item. Um, whereas a business requirement might not be satisfied directly, but uh, it could be its uh, satisfaction could be derived uh, by satisfying all the related functional and uh, uh, other non-functional uh, requirements. So this gives a, a good example uh, of how a requirement can be typically extended, uh, but this is a non-normative uh, thing. This is just uh, an example which comes together uh, with uh, your Cameo system smaller or magic draw with uh, CSML uh, plugin. Um, and uh, then uh, we should also take a look into relationships since uh, CSML defines uh, a number of relationships, how which you can use uh, uh, together with the uh, requirements. 
so you can uh, link uh, requirements together or you can trace requirements to other elements. For example, you may be willing to use a derived requirement relationship to derive the more detailed requirements from more abstract or more generic requirements. Or for example, you might be using a copy relationship to copy uh, requirement to some local project space to be able to track uh, the differences and make sure that your local copy of requirement is uh, in sync with the, uh, with the master. Uh, copy, and uh, then uh, you would also maybe use some uh, uh, some relationships. Like for example, you can use uh, a defined relationship from functional requirement uh, to a use case. However, uh, other organizations use a different relationship. They they decided uh, they should have a very generic uh, functional requirement, and then they would be using uh, uh, a refined relationship which goes from use case to uh, to a functional requirement. Or you may also uh, say that. Uh, um, that uh, the, uh, uh, the 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 use case uh, uh, the use case should be traced to certain uh, non-functional requirements and uh, have some other rules. So those rules are uh, not uh, not completely defined in CSML. Some of these rules are quite uh, specific. For example, the derived requirement relationship can only be used between two requirements. So you cannot use a derived requirement relationship between a requirement and the use case. Uh, however. Uh, in other cases, like refine, it is up to the modeler to choose which direction uh, is needed. And if you want to uh, adopt a consistent modeling method, you need to come up with uh, better defined uh, semantics and uh, establish some rules uh, to check that uh, all modelers use those relationships uh, in the same uh, consistent uh, way. And you may also be willing to add some new requirements which are not uh, uh, which are not uh, existing in the predefined uh, types of requirement uh, requirement relationships. For example, uh, there is uh, often the case that you end up having some requirements coming from different sources, typically, which uh, are conflicting. If you want to implement one requirement, then the other requirement would not be possible to satisfy. Um, so we will show uh, an example of how to add such a new relationship uh, to your modeling uh, uh, project. Um, so what uh, what we will do? We will take uh, uh, we'll go through a small example uh, on how to tailor CSML to to support your specific uh, needs, specific methodology needs, and uh, we will be doing this using uh, using a magic draw. Uh, in fact, we will be using a specific uh, tailored version of magic draw, which is called Cameo Systems Modeler, uh, which is a modeling platform for systems architects. Uh, analysts, developers, quality engineers, and other people involved in system engineering. Uh, MagicDraw is one of the most popular UML CSML tools in the market. It is available since 1998, so it has been uh, 17 years that uh, MagicDraw uh, is available in the market. And over the time, it has become quite popular. We have uh, over 1 million installations in more than 90 countries. Uh, even in countries like Vatican, we have uh, users using. Uh, using uh, modeling environment. Uh, uh, it is uh, widely regarded as the most standard compliant tool and uh, it is designed for customization to the customer needs. So we do not think that uh, an organization can take magic draw and use it effectively out of the box. Typically, you need to customize it. And uh, the topic of today's session is exactly about how to customize it to support uh, uh, specific needs uh, uh, in uh, defining, uh, in using specific categories and properties of uh, requirements uh, and uh, enabling a specific uh, methodology using uh, 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 your rules for tracing them. Uh, what we will do, we will switch, uh, after this slide, we will switch into uh, magic door environment and uh, most of the session will be done uh, based on working uh, on a small example. Um, in demonstrating how to do this in, uh, in Magic Cloud. Uh, we will cover how to design domain-specific model based on example and map it to the extensions of uh, CSML uh, stereotypes. Then we will also explore how to define uh, stereotype customizations, which is a Magic Draw specific feature in order to, to turn uh, a stereotype into a first-class modeling concept um, and um, enable Modelers to view the properties in a simple, uh, simple way. 
then we will be able, also able to explore how to specify specific validation rules to check for requirements model completeness and consistency. Um, we, uh, uh, we will uh, also explore how to create uh, a custom diagram which can be distributed to all the uh, magic drop clients so that you can enable uh, an easy way to create uh, those uh, uh, tailored specific versions of requirements in your, in your model. And uh, we will be uh, creating uh, all models and uh, all examples uh, using a small uh, case study, uh, which we would like to promote as a typical, as a best practice in how you should do the, um, the, ta uh, the tailorings, the extensions to CSML. Uh, we, we are big proponents of uh, test-driven development and we think that you should start from example and you should uh, design your extensions, your profiles uh, based on this example rather than starting from abstract meta model and then transforming it into profile, etc. So this is a time to, uh, to switch into modeling environment. And uh, I would like to remind you that if you have any questions, just feel free to, to write them to the, uh, to the questions uh, area. Uh, at any time, we will take uh, a look into them uh, a bit uh, later once we go through an example. So I'm now um, switched to uh, Cameo Systems Modeler environment and uh, I will create a, a small example um, which uh, will be from a, based on a case study of a, of a coffee machine. So coffee machine is a good uh, case study which is understandable by, by most of us. And uh, let's, let's uh, imagine that we, we are trying to engineer uh, something like uh, a coffee machine which should be installed in the, in the yearbook. So let's uh, start by creating a package which uh, we can create uh, in a magic draw model and we can call, call it uh, requirements. Uh, in this requirements uh, package, I would like to create uh, a new diagram and I will use requirement diagram, which is, which I believe is one of the, uh, excuse me, I will create, uh, I will create a requirements table. I will create a requirements table, which is uh, probably the easiest way to start uh, adding uh, uh, new requirements, uh, which is, uh, which is very similar, like uh, starting doing those requirements in Excel. You can also do that and you can easily copy and paste those requirements into requirements uh, table in magic draw from Excel at any time. So um, uh, I'll, I'm, I'm just giving a title uh, to the diagram. I'm calling it uh, coffee machine requirements and I'm starting to add a new requirement. At this moment, I will use just a generic uh, requirement. Uh, I will not use any of the uh, sample extensions uh, provided by, by CSML. Um, so all of my requirements will be initially uh, just uh, of requirement, uh, generic requirement type. So I will start by uh, saying that uh, giving a name for the requirement, uh, get uh, coffee uh, drink. And uh, I will, um, or maybe I will just call it uh, buy coffee, buy coffee, buy coffee. Uh, and uh, the text would be that the user uh, shall be able to buy a coffee drink using uh, a coffee machine, which is a high, very high level statement. Uh, and uh, we will add later some more detailed uh, requirements. Then we add another, uh, another requirement. And uh, let's say this is uh, a requirement, uh, something like, uh, for example, international accessibility. Accessibility. So this is uh, uh, a system which we develop uh, with um, consideration that uh, we should install it in the airport. So we would like to state that uh, the user uh, shall be able to operate the coffee machine in multiple languages. Then we will add another new requirement, and uh, this uh, uh, requirement uh, could be something like uh, saying that uh, 
we would like to buy uh, coffee. Uh, okay, maybe we can just say uh, accept uh, cash payment, uh, and uh, then we shall say that the system shall accept payments in cash. In reality, those requirements typically would be a bit more um, a bit more text, and uh, maybe we should care about uh, more about. Uh, the quality and the terminology used there, but uh, that's not uh, the main focus of this small example. So we are just trying to define certain uh, examples to to show how they can be um, used as a as a basis for designing a, a meta model and uh, creating a CML extension. Uh, the other requirement could be that we would like to accept accept uh, credit uh, credit cards uh, credit card payments. And then we can say that the system shall accept payments uh, in using uh, credit credit card. And let's add uh, one more requirement, and I think that will be sufficient for uh, our example. So the, the other requirement would be that uh, we would like to have an easy uh, easy maintenance. Um, Easy maintenance, right? And uh, the system uh, shall be easy or simple to maintain. Maintain. Um, and uh, let's say that uh, we are um, using just the standard uh, standard properties, which are name and uh, and text. At this moment, uh, uh, I could even um, I will not use any specific uh, uh, numbering schema for for this at this uh, at this moment. So what we what we would do, uh, we would uh, say that uh, at this moment that uh, we would like to actually also add some additional properties. Like in this case, we have a, a number of requirements, and we would like to see uh, how important each of each of them is. Uh, so we would like to have some property of uh, importance. Uh, and we also would like to to keep uh, track of the status, whether the requirement is uh, confirmed, or maybe this is just a, a, a draft requirement yet, or maybe this is already uh, implemented requirement, which you could probably even treat more as a system specification. Then. Uh, so uh, in order to add those uh, additional properties, we need to create uh, an extension of the requirement concept. And we will do this now. And uh, the extensions are typically done in the element which is called the profile. So we create uh, a profile and we will call it uh, uh, NM requirements. NM stands for no magic. And uh, then we will create a new diagram under this uh, under this package. Uh, since uh, CSML is using uh, UML um, profiling mechanism, then actually we will need to switch to UML diagram and we will need to create a profile diagram for visualization of those uh, stereotypes. So I will call the diagram and then requirements prototypes, uh, so, sorry, uh, profile. And uh, I will start by just uh, putting a requirement here. And uh, I start typing requirement and magic draw already shows me that there is a stereotype which is called requirement here. So what I choose here is a requirement which is coming in fact from a CSML uh, from a CSML itself. As you can see, it has a text and ID, as you have seen in the slides as well. And it also has a number of uh, properties like derived, derived from, satisfied, refined, traced, verified, master requirement, and so on, which are derived properties which are collected uh, based on the relationships between the requirements. Um, maybe for the simplicity, uh, I will just remove them from the view. So what I can do in Magic Draw, I can go to to edit compartment uh, on the um, uh, on the uh, on the, the tagged values on the uh, attributes and uh, then I would uh, I would say that uh, I would like to see only the ID and text uh, for simplicity and better understanding. So I will keep only the ID and uh, text uh, uh, text in the in the diagram. So now uh, what I will do I will uh, 
uh, I will I will extend the requirement and I will create an extended version of requirement, much like you have seen in the slides. But now I will create uh, my own uh, stereotype and I will call it uh, um, NM requirement. So this will be NM requirement, requirement, right? And uh, what I will do, I will uh, inherit it from the from the requirement. As you can see, the meta class has changed. Uh, to make it in uh, sync with uh, the, uh, the requirement uh, um, stereotype uh, meta class. And I will add uh, two properties. So one property is uh, importance. And uh, another property is uh, status of this uh, requirement. Now for the importance and for the status, I would like to have some uh, list of values. I wouldn't like to just say uh, string because I would like to, to be more Specific, for example, importance could be must have, should have, or nice to have. This is quite typical uh, categorization of uh, importance, uh, in, at least in software, uh, software engineering. So what we would uh, do, we would uh, create uh, uh, now an enumeration, enumeration which has those uh, those literals. So I would say this is uh, a requirement importance importance uh, definition and uh, this definition will have uh, enumeration literal of uh, must have should have and then nice to have which is something which never gets implemented so uh, we uh, just say that uh, you uh, assign it uh, as a type for the importance and we should probably repeat the same thing for the for the status so what I will do for the status I will say again this is a requirement status and the requirement status could be uh, could be draft if this is not yet confirmed uh, then it could be um, it could be confirmed And maybe it could be also implemented, or let's just simply call it uh, done. And uh, we will assign this one to the status uh, status property. So now we extended uh, the requirement to add those two additional properties which we were interested in. And uh, let us try to uh, let us try to uh, to add those uh, uh, those properties to the uh, to the requirements. In order to, to do this, what we should do, we should uh, select uh, all those requirements and uh, we should say that we would like to stereotype them by requirement, uh, requirement, uh, NM requirement, right? So I'm, I'm just adding a stereotype of an NM requirement uh, to support those uh, uh, in fact, what I, I probably should have done, I, I probably should also have uh, taken off the requirement, uh, sorry, the requirement uh, uh, stereotype. So you just uh, uh, just assign them. And uh, uh, now what uh, uh, what is the case? The case is that we could actually uh, specify for each of these requirements uh, a property of uh, requirement importance and requirement uh, status. Uh, but if we come back to the... Uh, uh, to the uh, requirements uh, table here, we actually could uh, try to choose uh, to show additional columns. Uh, columns here, and unfortunately, those columns are not uh, are not available for the requirement since this is a generic uh, requirement table that is defined for using uh, generic uh, requirements uh, as defined by by SysML. So what we should do, we should uh, create uh, a new table which is uh, specific to our requirements and uh, I will do it right now. So instead of choosing a standard requirement table, I'm, uh, I'm using uh, other diagrams and I'm, I'm choosing just a generic table, a generic table. And uh, then uh, what I will do, I will say this is a coffee uh, machine uh, requirement. Requirements uh, uh, and maybe I'll just use and then requirements to, to be more specific. And now what I will do, I will say that uh, the element type for this 
is I'm choosing just one example of uh, an M requirement and uh, specifying it as a as a type, and then I'm also uh, um, choosing requirements for uh, for the scope. Tag this actually has created a class. Maybe I should uh, also choose a, a stereotype to say that uh, I would like to specifically choose only the requirement. And then requirement uh, elements, right? So the class actually should go should go away. Yeah. And uh, now, if I would like to show the columns, then in fact I could uh, I could just go to uh, select uh, select columns here, and uh, I could uh, find uh, importance. I will add this one. And I will also add the status property to the columns to be uh, to be shown. And uh, I probably would also like to to use text as we had it uh, uh, as we had it uh, before. So we also add the text here. So let's keep the the text uh, so second uh, element and then importance and then. Uh, status as the last uh, last one. So, for example, now what we could say, we could say, okay, the importance of the uh, buy coffee is must have. Uh, then uh, the status is uh, confirmed, and uh, international accessibility should have. Uh, maybe this is uh, still draft. Accept cash uh, cash payment. Uh, maybe we can say this is uh, nice to have uh, because uh, nowadays I think people use less and less cash and more and more. Uh, credit to debit cards, so we can also say this is uh, draft, and uh, accept uh, credit card payment uh, would uh, use uh, uh, must have, and uh, maybe also will be confirmed. And then we could also say that the easy maintenance should is something which uh, we uh, also uh, are very um, uh, very clear about because we don't want to to spend a lot of uh, effort on maintaining the. Uh, the coffee machine, and we also will say that uh, this is uh, this is uh, maybe yet uh, a draft, not yet confirmed uh, requirement. And uh, now, what um, uh, what you have uh, have seen, we are able to uh, to add those additional properties which were not available in the requirement uh, itself uh, before. And uh, now we will um, we'll maybe try to to take a look into how we would like to categorize those requirements uh, in more detail. So for example, buy coffee is something which maybe I would like to treat as a very high level requirement and I would state this is a user need. And uh, then the international accessibility is uh, maybe something which is uh, um, actually non-functional requirement. It's a non-functional requirement uh, uh, because it doesn't change the way I operate the machine, but uh, this operation can be done in, uh, in a different uh, configuration. Um, so accept cash payment and accept credit card payment they require some functionality from the system but uh, it is related to uh, uh, something which is uh, maybe just a small step in a buy buy coffee uh, uh, function uh, so maybe these are functional requirements and easy maintenance again maybe this is a very high level user need uh, requirement since there will be not only users who are buying coffee but also users who need to refill their coffee machine or if you're using uh, cash payments, then you need to take uh, out cash and then uh, fill the uh, the coins for uh, for change and uh, and so on. So um, let's uh, come back to the profile now and let's say that we would like to extend the requirements a little bit and uh, define uh, define uh, uh, specific subtypes of the no magic uh, uh, NM requirement. So what I'm what I will do, I will first start by adding. Uh, uh, a requirement which is typed uh, as uh, as user need, uh, user need, and uh, I will simply uh, simply derive it from this uh, uh, NM requirement. Then I will add another one which would be um, uh, which would be functional requirement, and uh, then I will say that it is. It is also derived from the NM requirement, and uh, I will also add uh, another requirement, which will be 
uh, non-functional requirement. Non-functional requirement. Again, this is a small example. In reality, you typically have more uh, types of uh, of requirements. I just would like to state that uh, there is a, a very high level requirement, which is a user need, and then uh, we have maybe uh, functional or non-functional requirements that are um, that are derived from uh, high level requirements such as uh, user uh, user needs. So now, what we would like to do, we would like to to maybe um, uh, apply a specific stereotype, for example, for by coffee machine, we would like to say uh, a stereotype is uh, in fact uh, uh, in fact is a user need. So we can simply type it here. So this is a user need, um, and uh, then we would uh, we would probably not like to keep the we don't want to keep the and then requirements since user need is a specific uh, subcase of it. So it's enough to say this is a user yeah, user need. Uh, then what you what you could do you could also um, you could also say that uh, uh, you you would like to um, to have uh, uh, you would uh, the international accessibility is international accessibility is non-functional requirement. Let's uh, just let's select this one and just say non-functional requirement. And the accept cash payment and accept credit card payment, both of them are functional requirements. So you yeah, just need functional requirements. And uh, the easy maintenance could also be the user need. User need. So I stereotype now all the requirements, but uh, in fact, uh, it is uh, very te uh, tedious uh, if you don't uh, if you don't use. Uh, yeah, actually, I should probably um, reconfigure reconfigure my diagram to say that I would like to include all the subtypes of the uh, of the NM requirement to uh, to be shown, not only the uh, NM requirement, which is no longer um, an end type of requirement uh, as we define it. Uh, so what uh, uh, what we're gonna do now? We're gonna just try to open one of the requirements, like buy coffee, and uh, as you can see, actually this uh, this gives you a very clumsy uh, dialog, just because we actually have only applied a stereotype of uh, um, of a user need, and we have not really customized the user need to be a specific uh, modeling concept, which is a first class modeling concept in uh, in MagicDraw. So you can edit the properties, but those properties are somewhere quite deep here. And then uh, you would find out quite quickly that if you follow this approach, then most of the users, especially if they are new, would be quite scared of uh, seeing uh, dialogues like uh, like that. So we would like to simplify it, and we would like to to turn um, to turn uh, all of those uh, uh, all of those uh, uh, dialogues into much simpler ones. So let me show how to do this, uh, just in case I also save the model. And uh, uh, the way to do this is uh, to create uh, to create a specific uh, uh, element in Magic Draw, which is called uh, customization. Typically, you group those customizations in a specific uh, package. I'll make it uh, here, and uh, I will create. Uh, uh, I will just create. Uh, Maybe, um, okay, I think I'll need to create a, a class for which I need to switch to uh, to perspective of uh, full featured perspective. And then I will create a, a class for, let's do a customization for the functional requirement. So this is a functional uh, requirement uh, customization. I need to apply a stereotype, which is Customization, which is customization, and uh, then in this customization, what I will do, I will configure it. I will say that uh, this uh, customization is applied to customization target of functional requirement. And what I would like to do, I would like to hide the uh, meta type. I don't want to see it as a as a class. I rather want to see it as a functional requirement. Uh, then I can also say that, for example, 
for the uh, for the functional requirements, I only uh, I only allow uh, allow a specific uh, relationships. For example, I would only allow uh, derive uh, derive requirement relationship, and maybe also would like to allow the uh, refine uh, uh, or maybe uh, okay. Let's let's do this uh, trace uh, trace relationship. So let's take this. Uh, this one, um, this one here. Yeah. Uh, so uh, you would uh, be able to configure the relationships. You would also typically be uh, able to configure which of the UML properties you would like to use. For example, I would like to say that uh, I would like to use just the name from the UML class concept, and uh, I would like to configure how the uh, which of the properties I would like to see in this uh, specification dialog that is visible to the end user. So what I will do, I will say I would like to use uh, ID, and maybe this ID should be the, the first property here, then the name should be second. Uh, then I would like to say that uh, uh, that uh, uh, we also need uh, to specify the text. Let the text be uh, uh, after, the, after the name. And uh, I would also like to uh, to take importance as a fourth element, and uh, the status will be the the last element I see here in the, the main screen. And maybe I would also like to enable additional documentation about the requirement and uh, to see where it is used in the diagrams, and maybe also keep track of the relationships. So I provide uh, this configuration. In fact, you can configure a number of other properties, like for example, for the representation text, I would like to say that this is a, a functional requirement uh, with a space, and maybe for the keyword, I would uh, simply say this is uh, uh, this is functional, um, and uh, then uh, um, then I simply um, uh, once I you can figure out actually. All the details about all the customization, custom, available customization properties in the user manual. There's quite a lot of them, and uh, this is a very powerful mechanism. Uh, you can really uh, configure uh, a lot on a specific uh, concept, but uh, this will be sufficient for our demonstration. So once I uh, once I do this uh, customization, actually, I would need to reload the model because uh, Magic Draw reads all the customizations when it loads the project and only then it applies uh, applies them on the modeling uh, modeling concepts so now what i would like to do i would like to i would like to say that uh, uh, that i would like to reload the project i'm just reloading the project to make sure that uh, the customization is uh, enacted so it will take maybe um, a half of a minute to uh, Half of the minute, and then I should be uh, I should be able to now to go to the requirements, which is uh, uh, which is uh, here. And uh, if I go to the functional requirement, as you can see on my screen, uh, the number of properties which are available for the modeler are only those which I which I have given in the customization, and uh, the requirement is really uh, simplified uh, a lot. Um, what um, what we will do next? We will also try to. We should also pro create uh, similar customizations for all the other stereotypes. But uh, for saving, uh, for the sake of uh, saving our time, we will not do this. Uh, we will later be able to provide you a small example of uh, complete customizations for this uh, small case study. Uh, but uh, let's uh, try to. Uh, to create a requirements a diagram and try to understand some of the potential uh, relationships between those requirements. For example, if we create a requirements uh, diagram here, and if we just uh, uh, include uh, uh, buy coffee, and uh, then we also say, okay, the, the buy coffee is uh, a user need, and then we have a functional requirement. As you can see, the, the keyword here is specified exactly as I defined in the customization. Uh, we also take uh, Accept credit card payment, and we can say that uh, this requirement is derived from this user need, and uh, then uh, then this requirement is also derived from that user need. And uh, maybe we also have uh, another uh, uh, requirement, which is maybe uh, 
easy maintenance. And uh, probably we should also relate it, for example, to this requirement, which is accept cash payment. So accept cash payment should have an impact on the easy maintenance. And uh, if I just uh, just take any simple uh, dependence, I could actually say, okay, uh, oh, actually I did not allow it for the uh, for the uh, for the easy uh, easy maintenance. So so what I would like to um, uh, to do, I would like to say that uh, uh, I would like to trace uh, easy maintenance to uh, to be traced to from accept uh, cash payment. But uh, now maybe the relationship which I would like to to add is something like conflicts the easy maintainability conflicts with accept cash payment because then I need to refill the cash and then uh, probably only security officer can do this because it's uh, it's money so. Uh, the, the also the, the coffee machine is uh, way too difficult to uh, to implement. So let us uh, create uh, a specific uh, extended relationship which we call conflicts. So we would like to see conflicts between two different uh, requirements. And uh, what we will do now, we will create uh, a new stereotype which we will call conflicts. Conflicts, right? And uh, in this case, we will say that uh, the conflicts relationship actually the meta class for this one should be uh, should be a dependence. Uh, maybe I will just use abstraction. Abstraction. And uh, uh, now what uh, what we should uh, do? We should say that okay, um, we would like to use also a specific icon, a specific style of uh, representing this, so that people don't confuse it with. Uh, um, Confuse it with uh, with uh, specific, uh, with uh, generic uh, CML relationships. So what I will use for this, I will simply use a dotted line for the for the line style, and I will simply use uh, um, the arrows at both ends just to indicate that we um, maybe similar arrows at both ends just to indicate that uh, there is a conflict between those two um, requirements which are connected by this by this relationship. Right? So uh, what I'm what I'm doing now, I'm creating a new stereotype, and uh, what I will be able to do, coming back to the example, I would like to say that uh, this specific uh, uh, requirement conflicts with the other uh, requirement. So what I will uh, do now, I will simply use uh, conflicts as a as a stereotype between those two requirements, right? and as you can see, the notation changed to the style which I specified in the stereotype uh, definition. Uh, let's go a little bit uh, further and uh, let's say that we would also like to explore how to create specific rules about the relationships between the requirements. For example, if we if we simply say that uh, the easy uh, maintenance is, uh, if it is confirmed, uh, if the user need is confirmed, then it should never have anything which is uh, uh, related with complex relationship uh, uh, to it. So what we could say, we could say, let's create a, uh, something which is a validation rule saying that uh, um, that uh, confirmed user needs should not have any conflicts in the model. Uh, and this kind of uh, relationship is more like consistency re relationship because you should not be uh, confirming the requirement if there are unresolved uh, conflicts. However, there could be also uh, uh, other cases, like for example, with uh, international accessibility, we may have uh, a modeler which uh, just uh, uh, decided that the name is not so important, and then you simply kept uh, ID and text, but the name was uh, was empty. So in this case, you can have a regulation saying that all the requirements that you have in the model should have a name. So this is a case of uh, this case is more a case of uh, of a uh, completeness requirement, whereas this case, if we change the status to to confirmed, would be a test case showing that this is a consistency uh, issue. So we will try to create an example of how to define validation rules, how to define validation rules to detect uh, uh, to detect uh, both of these two cases. I will start with a simple case of uh, completeness. So I will just create a package. I will call it. Uh, uh, requirements completeness and uh, I will mark this package as a validation validation suite a validation suite 
validation suite is a package which holds a number of rules which you would like to execute at, uh, at one shot. And then I would like to create uh, uh, I would like to create uh, a constraint which will be the actual rule. And uh, I will simply call it that named requirement. Uh, and uh, I will say that uh, it should be stereotyped by validation as validation rule. And then you can go into it, its specification, and uh, then you can you can uh, you can define its uh, its properties. So what are the properties that you need to define for the uh, validation rule? So first of all, you need to define the constraint element. So in this case, we will try to constrain any of the NM requirements. So all of the subtypes of NM requirements should be uh, following this uh, this rule. And uh, we should uh, write an expression of the rule. Unfortunately, English is not executable in Magic Draw, so uh, we should choose uh, some uh, more structured language, and uh, we will choose uh, OCL2 in this case. But you can also use other scripting languages if you are not a good friend with uh, with object constraint language. So, the, in object constraint language, I would uh, refer to a property of uh, a specific element, in this case, name. And I will simply say this is not an equal to an empty empty string, which means that the requirement uh, is empty. So that's my simple rule for uh, detecting unnamed requirements. And I would like to also specify error message, which is more instruction what to do about this case, which I will call please specify the name of the requirement. And the abbreviation could probably be something like no name. Like that. So we define the rule and we can try to, to run it to see if this finds this type of, of elements. So what we do, we go to validate the model and we choose uh, and we choose uh, um, where are the requirements, the requirements completeness suite, and we try to run it on this uh, on this model. So as you can see, uh, this non-functional requirement which had no name has been uh, detected by this uh, by this validation rule. So I will I will change the name and I can rerun the validation suite and now my model is complete according to this uh, validation rule. Of course, typically you would also have uh, additional validation rules which uh, typically able, uh, enable you to detect uh, other cases, uh, typical cases of uh, uh, having your model incomplete. Uh, what I will do next, I will create how to create uh, a consistency rule, which uh, which I mentioned before. So I will again create another package. And uh, in this case, I would like to, I would like to maybe make it uh, uh, not a simple validation suite, but uh, rather make it uh, an active, active validation. Uh, active validation suite. And uh, I will create an in active validation suites are always uh, active, uh, actively run. So I will create uh, a constraint, which uh, I, will I will call confirmed uh, user need no conflicts. So conflict user, confirmed user need should have no, uh, no conflicts. So I, I call it again as a, as a validation rule. I mark it as a validation rule, and uh, now it is a little bit uh, tricky, but I can actually uh, just go to specification of this uh, uh, easy maintenance uh, uh, element, which is not uh, uh, not customized uh, uh, customized yet, and actually I could uh, check all the properties, and you could find out that there is a supplier dependency uh, from this uh, uh, from this element uh, going uh, going out. So so I would. Uh, um, maybe uh, try to show you in a quick uh, uh, in a quick quick trial how to define this uh, more specific rule. Um, in in this case, the rule is a little bit more complicated, uh, and again, I will use uh, OCL for for it. Uh, but uh, oh, I forgot to specify that this is uh, in context of user need. So I will uh, create a user need as a as a context for this rule. And I will say that uh, supplier dependency 
uh, supplier. Um, yeah, I, I actually, what I would like to, to say, uh, if status uh, if status uh, is equal to requirement status status confirmed confirmed then this this implies that the supplier dependency okay let's let's make it simple at this moment let's uh, let's say that uh, it should not have any existing uh, existing uh, supplier dependencies such that they are of type of type conflicts and uh, i think we should also give another bracket and uh, this should not be uh, this should not be true so i hope that i didn't make any mistake in this uh, quick trial and uh, i will provide uh, i will provide uh, uh, error message error message saying that uh, uh, please uh, resolve uh, all the conflicts for confirmed user user need and uh, abbreviation will be conflicts so let's uh, try to run uh, run this requirement and see if this finds this uh, this case so uh, i would uh, simply uh, involve it uh, from uh, consistency uh, at this at this moment and uh, we can see that uh, this uh, uh, this rule has been uh, has been also activated on the right uh, right case but uh, what is uh, more interesting that these rules are typically consistency rules are typically those which are candidates for running them all the time Again, the uh, active validation uh, suites, they are activated on the project load. So I will reload the project to demonstrate uh, how, it, uh, how it works. So as you can see now, Magic Draw model is loaded and it automatically got, uh, got read. If I relink it to a different, uh, different user need, oh, okay, this actually doesn't, uh, uh, doesn't give me a possibility, uh, but let's, let's change. Uh, because I made a customization to say that the conflict is not a type of relationship between the uh, functional requirements. Let's say that uh, this is yet a draft, uh, a draft user user need. And as you can see, after I change the status to draft from confirmed, the active rule uh, was not activated because this uh, rule should be true only if the requirement status is confirmed. If I change it uh, to confirmed, uh, sorry to confirm here again, then the rule will be activated uh, once again. So um, this was uh, um, uh, what I wanted to show about uh, adding specific rules. And I would also like to maybe uh, take a couple of more minutes and I uh, think we won't have much time for questions, but uh, it is important to say that uh, these uh, requirements, they are typically reusable. And what you typically should do, you should, uh, uh, the profile is typically reusable and you should actually export this package as a new project, as a separate project so that you can reuse it with uh, all of your projects which follow this, uh, uh, which follow this uh, requirements uh, methodology. Uh, I will simply do it, uh, do it right now. It is uh, checking for dependencies and then it is asking me to, uh, to uh, uh, for a package to, to save. Uh, once you uh, once you once you export it, then this to a separate package, then this becomes a reusable resource which you can include in any of the projects where you would like to use these types of requirements and uh, and these uh, rules. And uh, then uh, last but not least, uh, what you could also do instead of using a standard uh, requirements diagram like this, you can actually create your own uh, requirements diagram. Unfortunately, we are running uh, out of time today, so I won't be able, uh, won't be demonstrating how to do that. Uh, there is a section in user manual which explains this. I will only show you how it looks like uh, since I created it before uh, our session. So what uh, what this diagram would look like, for example, here I just created uh, 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 configured using a, a very simple wizard a new uh, requirements diagram which uh, is custom to our approach. 
and uh, okay actually actually I have not yeah I think I have uh, I have removed the profile so I, I won't be able to demonstrate uh, at this moment but uh, what you typically do you just go to your diagrams and you start uh, by saying that you would like to customize and create a specific uh, a specific diagram and uh, then you go through a number of steps saying that uh, you should have specific modeling toolbars and uh, then those toolbars should be those specific types of requirements which you use in your methodology uh, and uh, you configure the view so that it is a very simple view which instead of the standard uh, requirements uh, toolbar like here would use uh, magic draw uh, your specific uh, requirements so instead of uh, requirement here you would have your user need and uh, functional requirement and non-functional requirement you would remove the standard CML concepts and you would use only those relationships which you are using in your uh, requirements modeling uh, methodology so that's it um, that's I think the um, uh, the end of the of the modeling and I would like to come back maybe to the slides and just to say that uh, in fact uh, this is a, this was a short demonstration, and uh, we um, we only demonstrated uh, some very basic things. Of course, there are more advanced things, and uh, about uh, configuring those rules and distributing the resources and making sure that the modeling approach is uh, is suitable. We do recommend to build those extensions based on the examples, like we did in this session, not based on uh, abstract meta models and then uh, implementing profiles uh, based on those abstract meta models. And uh, we also provide professional services so that uh, we can help you on this journey to make sure that your extension is uh, tailored and uh, properly and uh, that you can use it effectively in, uh, uh, in Magic. Uh, this is my contact for the, for the communications, but uh, let's see if we have uh, any questions which you posted uh, at, this, uh, at this moment. Thank you, Darius. So now is the question time, and we have a question by client. I mean the client of the dependency. Yeah. So yeah, the question I think was, uh, can you customize the client uh, client type uh, uh, of the uh, of the dependency? And then uh, yeah, sure, you can do that. You can customize that. Uh, for that, you would need to. Uh, you would need to create a customization for the relationship and uh, specify what uh, what kind of uh, uh, ends it can support. Uh, and then typically you would also configure the smart manipulator, which is a, a special element in a diagram setup, which uh, shows you which uh, are the uh, uh, the end uh, or, or starting element of uh, of this relationship uh, in the uh, in the diagram. And another one question, is the ability to extend objects also available in TOGAF or is the, this limited to CSML? Yeah, so in fact, uh, in fact uh, uh, this is nothing specific to CSML. The, in fact, MagicDraw is UML-based uh, UML, uh, uh, modeling environment and uh, CSML capabilities are also built using a similar way like we uh, seen here. It's the same case with TOGAF, and the TOGAF is also implemented in MagicDraw as a, as a specific profile on top of UML, and you would be able to, to take those stereotypes and extend them further with adding additional properties or specializing them for your, for your needs. So this is exactly the same thing on different, uh, uh, on different uh, customizations which are coming already uh, as, as pre-built in, uh, in different uh, MagicDraw offerings.
Okay, I think I think these are uh, this is uh, maybe uh, the questions which uh, uh, which is uh, uh, yeah. There was one question which I was also not uh, yeah not able to to comprehend. But but if you have more questions about this, uh, please uh, post them online, and I think we can uh, answer them later on and uh, post them to the to the book. So thank you all for your participation. We hope to see you again, again in upcoming webinars.